system should have a in information source like I am telling you these topics I am the source my voice is the source of these informations there is an input transducer so my voice is being recorded so transducer what is the function of the transducer the function of a transducer is to convert some signal in from another format to other format so in this case, my voice signal is getting converted into some electrical signals and it is being transmitted to you. So we need to use a transmitter and it is passing through a channel, the channel of internet, channel of YouTube. And so noise is introduced in the channel and in the receiver side, what you are seeing this, uh, there is also a transducer which is converting these electrical signals into audiovisual signals and it is reaching the, to the destination that is to your eye, to your ear, so you can hear this and you can see what what is going on in my YouTube channel, what is going on for today's discussion. Now, what kind of source we may have? We may have some speech signal. Which I am, I am having some speech to you. We can have fax machine. We can have personal computer. I am recording this uh, video in the, my computer. We may have the mobile. You are doing so WhatsApp very regularly. So the source of information may be from mobile, etc. Input transducer. I am using a microphone to uh, communicate with you through this YouTube channel. So microphone, which is what is the function of a microphone it is basically converting my voice signal into the electrical signal so this is the main function of the microphone so it is can be used as transducer the keyboards i'm scrolling it down scrolling it up so input transducer is also being the keyboard it is also converting this to an electrical signal etc and the transmitter may be consist of antenna satellite the internet channel the optical fiber channel etc Sorry, of the fiber or channel, antenna, satellite, etc. In the channel, you can have optical fiber channel, telephone channel, internet channel, etc. And in the receiver side, you may hear my video by using a personal computer, by using a mobile, whatever you can say. So, TV speakers, all are the receivers. So, this is the basics of communication system. These are the elements which is used to communicate. These are the examples by which we can communicate in a long distance. So now the basic concept of modulation things in mind. What is modulation? Suppose you are traveling to your school, college, or office from your home. It is a distance apart from your home. So you are using some bus, you are using taxi, you are using other railway traffic, etc. So these uh, bus, train, taxi, whatever 
ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਹੁਣ ਬੋਲਾ ਸੋ ਦਿਸ ਟ੍ਰੈਫਿਕਸ ਆਰ ਨੀਡਡ ਟੂ ਸੈਂਡ ਯੂ ਫਰਮ ਹੋਮ ਟੂ ਆਫਿਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਫਿਸ ਟੂ ਹੋਮ ਸੋ ਦਿਸ ਹੋਮ ਐਂਡ ਆਫਿਸ ਆਰ ਦ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੋਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਡੈਸਟੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਈ ਦੈਟ ਟਾਈਮ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਹੈਲਪ ਆਫ ਅ ਟ੍ਰੈਫਿਕ ਬਾਈ ਵਿਚ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਯੂਟਿਲਾਈਜ਼ ਯੋਰ ਟਾਈਮ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਗੋ ਫਾਸਟਰ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਚੂਜ਼ ਅ ਈਜ਼ੀ ਰੂਟ so that basically your career so your matrix signal that is q is super imposed upon this career that is your traffic that is your bus rail tra- taxi whatever it is and in the destination this bus rail traffic is not entering on the you are entering so the matrix signal is transmitted and with the help of the carrier it is uh, traveling to your the destination and the message is only sent to the destination and carrier is cut out carrier signal is getting cut out so this is the basically function of a communication system and by the system by which we are super imposing that carrier signal into the message so this concept is known as modulation taking the mod- the grammatical meaning of the modulation is the to change so here what we are changing we are just changing the power of a message signal by using a carrier signal because carrier signal have a high frequency it has high power so that it can communicate a long distance my voice can be uh, audible in my home, in my room but it cannot be audible outside so to make it audible outside we are using telephone we are using this laptop we are using internet and all these are communicated via a carrier signal the carrier signal is carrying by a signal to you this concept is basically known as modulation and the process by which the message signal is extracted back from the mixture of the uh, carrier and message signal this portion is called this process is called demodulation and it is done in the receiver side so this is the basic of modulation now why the modulation is needed first of all the main reason is antenna length reduction how we know that in communication system we use the effective uh, antenna length that is equal to lambda by 2 what is lambda lambda is the wave length now what is lambda lambda is equal to c by a squared c is the speed of light that is 20 to 8 meter per second and it is the frequency now my uh, suppose my audio frequency is maximum 4 kilohertz so a uh, signal of 4 kilohertz i need to transmit to a long distance communication so what is the length of this um, antenna this antenna length will become like that l equals to lambda by 4 that is c by 4 is e is the string to 10 to the power 8 meter per second and 4 into 8 8 is 4 kilohertz so 4 into 10 to so it becomes almost equals to 20 kilometer you can easily imagine that a uh, antenna which is wide length of 20 kilometer is not possible to install practically so if i increase the frequency the length will become uh, very less because the length is indirectly proportional to the frequency so if i increase the frequency suppose i am now having a carrier frequency which is super imposed with this voltage signal and this carrier frequency is 3 megahertz so from this calculation we can see that the length is only 25 meter long which is easily practically achievable and then a high so that's why the number one reason is to reduce the antenna length that is why the modulation is needed and in our mobile phone we you all know that the antenna the micro strip antenna is used that is micro meter range that is why it is possible to implement this antenna inside our a small handset so if the length is in micro meter you can imagine how how much bigger frequency is used as carrier in our mobile communication 
number two is to remove interference. We know that our audio signal frequency range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Sorry for some problem here. So here it is the second problem, uh, second intention for this modulation is to remove interference. Our audio frequency is low from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz in radio broadcast in there are several stations. You listen to FM, there is uh, 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz, many stations are there. So if we do not use different carrier frequency, it is very, very much difficult to distinguish this channel and they will mix up so we'll have the interference in the radio channel this 88 megahertz that is 98.3 megahertz 106.2 megahertz whatever radio station you are using or uh, sorry whatever radio frequency you're listening this 98 megahertz or 98.3 94.3 or 106.2 megahertz all these are the carrier frequency so we are using different frequency for different channels just to remove the interference. Second, uh, sorry, third one is to reduce the noise. If we can, uh, we are using this modulation technique is to reduce the noise. Okay, now with modulation. Modulation having basically these are classified into two parts: that is analog modulation and Sorry, the basically three part amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. So analog modulation, I'm just just discussing to the analog modulation part. Analog modulation, basic of analog modulation. Modulation it means change analog mo amplitude modulation means that to change the amplitude. Whose amplitude will be changed? The amplitude of carrier signal will be changed. How it will change? It will be changed proportional to the instantaneous value of the amplitude of the measure signal. So amplitude modulation will be defined as a system in which the maximum amplitude of the carrier wave is made proportional to the instantaneous value of the measure signal. Right, so in the figure we can see a measure signal of sine wave, the basic and the simplest form of the signal is sine wave. We are using a carrier of high frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the power and it can transmit more longer distance. So if we superimpose these message and carrier signal, the AM modulated signal will be like this one. The carrier, this is the carrier signal and it, the amplitude of the carrier is adding according to the value of the message signal. Why is the message signal? Because it's this. This is the amplitude of the message signal and we can see there is a dual side band is present and the original carrier having a constant amplitude. So here the amplitude of carrier is added. We can see this. Okay, so now just for uh, we are going to have some derivation of single tone amplitude modulation. Now let us consider the basic, the most basic waveform that is sine or cosine. So let us consider our method signal is equals to Vm cos omega mt, where Vm is the maximum amplitude of the message signal and omega m is the frequency of the message signal. So in this case, the message signal consists of only one frequency, that is why it is single tone amplitude modulation and this is the very easiest part. Now we are taking the carrier signal C T equals to A cos omega C T where A is the amplitude of the carrier signal and omega C is the frequency of the carrier signal. The general expression of A M can be written as S T equals to A plus X T cos omega C T. If we superimpose carrier signal with measure signal it will give you the general expression of single tone amplitude modulation signal that is ST equals to K plus HT into cos omega Now, if we 
multiply these will become a cos omega theta plus x t cos omega theta. So just put the value of x t. What what was x t? X t was v m cos omega m t. So we are putting the value of x t will get v m cos omega m t cos omega theta. Now just the mathematical derivation is there. I think you we all have gone through the formula in your high secondary level. That is. If we take Vm by 2 as common, it will be 2 cos omega theta plus cos omega m t. So 2 cos a cos b equals to cos a plus b plus cos a minus b. It will keep the expression of this one. That is Vm by 2 into cos omega t plus omega m t plus cos omega t minus omega m t into t. So from there, you can see that the single tone amplitude modulated signal will have Three parts. That is, a cos omega theta, which was our carrier signal. There is a frequency component of omega t plus omega m. That is, you will see your upper side wave. <coughs> And another portion is omega t minus omega m. That is, lower side wave. So three main parts: that is, carrier, upper side band, and lower side. So upper side band frequency is omega t plus omega m, and lower side band is omega t minus omega m. So if we draw the frequency representation, uh, frequency spectrum of the m, we can have in the x-axis there is omega, that is frequency, and y-axis amplitude. So three components are there in the omega t the amplitude is a, in omega t plus omega m the amplitude is a by two. Similarly, m by two for omega t minus omega m. So this is the frequency spectrum representation of a single tone amplitude modulated wave. So from here, you can easily calculate the bandwidth of the single tone amplitude modulated wave. What is bandwidth? Bandwidth simple formula is the highest frequency minus the lowest one. So omega t plus omega m. Minus omega t minus omega m, and here it is the bandwidth of amplitude modulated signal is 2 omega m. That is twice the frequency of message signal. That's how the derivation of single tone amplitude modulated signal and its bandwidth calculation is derived. Now another important term that is modulation index. We have to calculate what is modulation index. It is defined as the measure of extent of amplitude variation about an unmodulated maximum carrier. Mathematically, it is the maximum amplitude of the message signal divided by the maximum amplitude of the carrier signal. Basically, it is the ratio. Ratio of what? The maximum amplitude of message signal and Maximum amplitude of carrier signal that is E M by A according to our consideration because we consider X T equals to V M cos omega M T and T equals to A cos omega T. So modulation index equals to V M by A. Okay. Now if we multiply 100 by with this modulation index, we will get the percentage modulation. Now from this modulation index and percentage modulation, we will have the concept of Three types of amplitude modulation: that is, under modulation, critical modulation, and over modulation. First of all, we know that the modulation index is V M by A. V M equals to V M by A, where V M is the maximum amplitude of the message signal. A is the maximum amplitude of the carrier signal. Now, three cases may happen: one, V M is less than A; two, V M equal to A; three, V M greater than A. First. V M less than A. When V M is less than A, you can easily say that modulation index having a value less than one. So if we multiply this value with hundred, we will have a percentage modulation which is less than hundred percent. This case is known as under modulation, and this is the most desired condition for the amplitude modulation technique. Now, second case, if V M is equals to A, you can easily calculate that M A equal to one. If modulation index having a value equal to one, 
then the percentage modulation will become 100% and this is called critical modulation or perfect modulation. This is the ultimate condition which we desire but it is not practically possible. It is not possible to install practically. So we try to modulate any message signal to its very best that is practically 90% to 98% but 100% is not practically possible. And the last one which is most undesirable condition that is message signal having a higher frequency sorry higher amplitude than the area signal that is PM greater than A. In that case modulation index will have a higher value than 1 so if we multiply this with 100, it will give a value of more than 100% modulation. In that case, the phase distortion occurs. This is called over modulation and how this phase distortion occurs. Let's consider these figures. These are the three figures. First one is under modulation where MA is less than 1. In case equal to on the critical modulation is like this, the upper side band remains upper, lower side band remains lower. And for the over modulation, what happens? The upper portion, the positive portion will come to the negative one at some time, and the negative portion of the envelope will come to the upper portion sometimes. So it will cause a phase distortion, a phase change of the carrier signal occurs. So, in amplitude modulation, what is the definition we need to change the amplitude, not the frequency or phase. In that case, the phase of, phase of the carrier is also changing. So, this is the most undesirable condition. So, we, we will have to keep PM less than or equal to 1 for good amplitude modulation, good quality of amplitude modulation. So, these are three types of amplitude modulation, these are under modulation, critical modulation and over modulation. Now this is the power of single tone modulation, another small derivation is there, that is HT equals to A cos omega 3 plus HT cos omega 3 we have already discussed in the single tone amplitude modulation derivation, where HT is the message signal, which is represented by PM cos omega MT and A cos omega 3 is the carrier signal. Now the unmodulated carrier power let us consider PC which is the root mean square sorry root not root the mean square value of the carrier that is A cos omega city which is A square by C. So the side band power will have similarly same formula that is half into gm square by 2 that is gm square by 4. Why half? Because there are two side bands are present one is upper side band and second one is lower side band. So total power just makes the addition of carrier power and sideband power. It will give h square by 2 plus m square by 4. Now if we take h square by 2 common, it will give 1 plus m square by 2 a square. Now we know that gm by a is the modulation index. So here we can conclude that total power is equal to h square by 2 into 1 plus m square by 2. So what is h square by 2? h square by 2 is the, here it is, the carrier power. So total power is equal to carrier power into 1 plus modulation index square by 2. This is a very important formula, very important for power calculation in amplitude modulated wave signal. Another topic is transmission efficiency. It is known as sideband power by total power to 200 percent. So sideband power is gm square by 4 and total power is the addition of carrier power and sideband power that is square by 2 plus gm square by 4. So if we divide the upper portion and lower portion that is numerator and denominator by gm square by 4 it will be 1 by 1 plus 2 a square by gm square. We know the gm by a is modulation in a. So a by gm is 1 by modulation index so it becomes like that so transmission efficiency is modulation index square divided by 
two class modulation index where these two hundred percent. Now there is a small numerical problem. A four hundred watt carrier is modulated. So four hundred watt carrier that is T three goes to four hundred watt with a depth of twenty five percent. That is modulation index is zero point seven five. We need to find out the total power and the transmission efficiency. So from the formula, total power is equal to T three into one plus M square by two. Just put the value. You will get the total power here. And for transmission efficiency, again put the formula and put the value of modulation index. You get the transmission efficiency equals twenty one point nine five percent. I think it is not so difficult. And in the second numerical problem, the Total power is transmitted is 10 kilowatts. That is 10 into 10 to the power 3 watts. And modulation percentage is 60, so modulation index is 0.6. So just we need to calculate the carrier power. So just put the formula P equals to P into 1 plus M square by 2, and just put the value of M A and total power, and you will get the value of carrier power that is 8 and a half kilowatt. So that's all for today. Just the basic portion of the communication system and the analog communication. We'll come with again some day some video with more and more part of these communication systems. So if you like the video, please subscribe and share, comment if any doubt. So thank you. That's all for today. Hope you are enjoying these easy, easy classes. Thank you.